Hello. So in this video, we are going to be covering factoring out the sort of greatest common divisor or taking out the common factors. And in fact, I'm going to do it sort of a little bit differently than you've probably seen it in the past, mostly by virtue of trying to demonstrate this in practice rather than sort of the perfect theory. All right. So factoring out a common factor. What is that? So it's the process of finding, ideally, the greatest common divisor and then pulling it out from each term. Now, that's great on paper. <laughs> and sort of unfortunately, what often happens is when you're learning this, the instructor sort of typically always sees exactly what to factor it out right at the beginning and sort of pulls out the perfect thing every time. And that's because your instructor has been doing this so many times it would make you die inside just hearing the number. <laughs> like we do this thousands of times a semester, helping students, teaching it, and doing our own stuff, doing grading, all of these things. So we do this all the time. And as a result, just like anything else that people do that often, we get really good at it. Unfortunately, this leads to a misconception that you, the student, first learning or first sort of getting real practice with this, sort of should be able to do the same thing, right? That the way to do it correctly, quote unquote, is to find the greatest common divisor and factor it all out at once. And in practice, sort of not only is that not true, there's no reason you have to do it that way. In practice, usually trying to do it that way generates more mistakes. So instead, we're going to do a slightly different technique. So let's look at an example this hideous equation here, our goal is to factor out all the common factors, right? get the greatest common divisor out. Now, instead of looking for the best common factor, like the one that works you know, perfectly and gets it perfectly factored immediately, instead of doing that, let's just look for any common factor, okay? So looking at this, I might look and say, okay, well, I'm looking at the terms 42x cubed e to the x, uh, 112x squared e to the 2x, 14x e to the x. I'm not a big fan of all this letter soup stuff. I will look at the numbers first and go, ah, all the numbers, those things are all even. All right. So since each of the constants is even, that means that two goes into each of them evenly. So two is a common factor. So that's all I'm going to pull out as a starting spot, okay? So when I do that, I'm going to write the 2 in the front, right? I'm going to have the parentheses to say that I'm factoring out of that, and then I'm going to divide 2 out of each of the terms, right? Now, if it's a common factor, each of those divisions should be nice and even, right? They should all simplify perfectly. If they didn't, then that wasn't a common factor, and I shouldn't have pulled it out, right? So if I do all those divisions, that gets me down, right? So I have 42 over 2 is 21, 112 over 2 is 56, 14 over 2 is 7. I've now factored out 2. Now, you may look at that and say, well, hold on, because there's other stuff that I might be able to factor out here, so I must have messed up. And that's the thing that I sort of want to point at very sort of explicitly just because we haven't factored out the greatest common factor doesn't mean that we've screwed up, doesn't mean that we've messed up. It just means we're not done yet. We have more steps that we can do, okay? And doing this in multiple steps is typically the best way to not make mistakes when you're doing this with really complicated expressions, okay? So now that we've factored out two, we look at the resulting, the, the resulting sort of piece that's still inside, and we see if there's any other common factor in there that we could factor out. So looking at this two times all of this stuff, right, I'm looking at the inside bit, the 21x to the third, e to the x, blah, 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 that little in bit, inside bit, and I want to see what is a common factor. Maybe I notice e to the x is on all of these. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I just did, only now I have a two sort of floating out, and then I'm going to have the e to the x sort of pulled out as well, but I don't, I don't necessarily need to put it with the two. I'm going to have sort of nested parentheses. So I'm going to have something like this, right? So I don't want to forget the two. I need to make sure that sticks around. But right now, I'm just factoring out the e to the x. And again, I can think of it as dividing out each of these. I will say as an asterisk for any of you that might be interested in sort of deeper level math, technically factoring is not the same as division, and there's some reasons why that's actually really important. But it turns out that this gets into something called ring theory, which is uh, second semester abstract algebra, which is like a math major senior level course. 
we're not going to worry about that here. <laughs> okay. So like there's some deep magic even here in the background, but none of it is stuff that you have to worry about. So effectively, I am dividing out these terms. And again, as long as it really was a common factor, all of that division should go through without a hitch. And I can then merge the 2 and the e to the x now that I've sort of pulled out the e to the x. And that gets me, right, the 2 and the e to the x are together over here. And I cancel out those e to the x, those e to the x. That's how I get the 21x cubed and the 7x. And here I don't quite just cancel. There's really another e to the x up here, right? So I have 56x squared e to the x left over as my middle term. Again, you might look at this and notice there's still stuff you can pull out. But that doesn't mean that we've messed up. It just means that we have another thing that we can sort of another step to do. We have more to do, right? Now, to be clear, I'm doing this sort of very uh, piecemeal, doing every single like little piece to show the process. And we can keep iterating this one step at a time, you know, pulling out one number or whatever at a time until we don't find any more common factors. And that's how we know that we're done. But there's no reason you can't do multiple terms at once. If you're comfortable doing or you happen to see more than one term at once, that's fine. You can go ahead and pull out more than one at once. Just don't feel obligated to pull out large expressions all at once and hope that you don't make mistakes, right? Don't feel like you have to do it in one factoring step. Multiple steps is usually a better way to not make mistakes, okay? So we want to pull out common factors. We don't want to worry about if they're common, if they're the greatest common factor. We just need to check the result and see if there's more to pull out. If there are, if there is more to pull out, keep doing so. If there isn't, then we're done, okay? So looking at our, again, leftover bit, this inside bit, I might notice that I have an X in each of these. I might even notice that I have a seven that divides each of these. So if I notice both of those, I could pull out seven X, right? I don't have to do them separately. I can do them together. If I wanted to do them separately, that is also fine. Same deal, I'm gonna pull it out tack it on with the, the leading bit and divide it out of each of the pieces. So that gets me that I have, again, that, that 2e to the x is still floating out there. I pulled out a 7x, I divided it out of each piece, and doing that gets me down to this expression, right? So I can merge the 7x and the 2e to the x, which is how I get that 14xe to the x. And then I divide out these pieces, which is how I get this 3x squared minus 8x, uh, minus 8x e to the x, very hard to list all of this at once, plus one. Now there's a nice little thing I can notice, right? Because now I'm, I'm back to the step of, okay, is there any other common factors? And I have to look and see if I can find any. There is a nice thing if you happen to notice it, which is that we have a one in there now. So as soon as I have a one, that tells me that I have to be finished. Not, it's not to say that I have to keep going till I get a one, but if it shows up, there's no other common factor. Because really when I say common factor, I want something that divides every term other than one. And the only thing that divides one evenly is one. There's nothing else that can be there, right? So as soon as I see a one, I know I'm done. I don't even have to look. But to be clear, again, I know I'm sort of beating on a dead horse, but this is sort of the important other side of this approach is that we need to know when we're done. And to know when we're done, it's just when there aren't any more common factors. So you may not have a one, right? If I had a three there or a five there instead of the one, we would still be done. I wouldn't be able to pull anything out, okay? So once I get to the point where there are no remaining common factors among those inner terms, then that means that we're done. Now, I could have done all of this sort of in one go by just pulling out 14x e to the x, right? And a lot of the times when this is taught, that's exactly what they do is they go through and they're like, okay, what's the greatest common divisor between these three terms? And then they are like, oh, obviously it's 14x e to the x and they pull that out. And to my experience, <laughs> a lot of the times it's obviously 14x e to the x and all the students are like, uh, obviously? Did anyone else think that was obvious? <laughs> right? not, not so much, right? So that's why I'm going through it this way to be like, you don't have to have it work that way, right? You can pull it out piece by piece until you get to the greatest common factor. All right. 
So what do we do? Well, we talked about how to factor out the greatest common factor and specifically how to do it piecemeal by just taking whatever common factors we see, pulling them out one at a time, and keep going until there are no common factors, and then you're done, right? If you happen to get a one inside, then you sort of don't even have to check, you're good. But even if you don't get a one inside, it's possible to be done just because there aren't any more common factors, all right? So that is that.